Lying and movement. There was a cruel, oppressive tribal leader named Abu Jahl who lived during the time of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. God revealed a verse of the Quran to warn him. No, indeed, if he does not stop, we will seize him by the forehead, his lying, sinful forehead. God does not call this person a liar, but calls his forehead, the front part of the brain, lying and sinful and warns him to stop. This verse is significant for two reasons. The first is that the front part of our brain is responsible for voluntary movement. This is known as the frontal lobe. Secondly, numerous studies have shown that this same region, frontal lobe, is responsible for the lying function of the brain. The Quran links movement and lying to this area. These functions of the frontal lobe were discovered with medical imaging equipment which was developed in the 20th century. Okay, so you know how most of these miracles have been predicated on the assertion that no one knew something until it was revealed in the Quran, only to find that this isn't true? Yeah, here we go again. Despite the ancient Egyptians notoriously removing the brain during excerebration, the knowledge that the brain is the locus of thought, or at the very least an essential part, dates back at least 12,000 years to the Neolithic period, as evidenced by cave paintings depicting trepanation surgery and thousands of skulls to accompany them. And if that doesn't convince you, consider Alcmeon of Crouton, who in the 5th century BC, or 1,200 years before Islam, accurately concluded that all senses and memories are seated in the brain. Or Hippocrates, who in the 4th century BC, accurately associated many cognitive impairments with the brain, and even speculated that the brain's two halves are capable of independent processing.